1136 this midday. In just a few more days, Missouri and other states across the country will begin the slow process to try and get back to what a normal life used to feel like. Yeah, on Sunday, the statewide stay at home order expires and businesses will be allowed to reopen. Missouri Governor Mike Parson joins us this morning to talk about what reopening looks like. Governor, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on this morning. Thank you. Governor Parson, of course, the state reopens next week. We're excited for that. People are excited to see how that's going to look. But Kansas City does not open until the 15th. We heard from the mayor yesterday. There's a lot of confusion about that from people, especially here that live in the city on those two dates being so different. Mayor Lucas has said that work, what works for maybe smaller parts of the state doesn't work for a large city like Kansas City. Can you explain from a state perspective the difference and why it maybe makes sense to let city, cities go further than what the state's doing? Right. I, I think the one thing you got to look at is, is why we opened up the state the way we did. You have to look at the entire state, you know, and, and then you have to break it down in regions. And when we see the, the main thing that we all started out with 50 days ago, basically on the COVID-19, was it going to overwhelm your health care systems? Now, we know today after getting Missouri data and getting the information we have that we know our hospitals can handle a situation now if it gets out, uh, if it spikes in any of these areas. But the reality is Kansas City and St. Louis, especially St. Louis, I'll say, is not on the same track as the rest of the state. But eventually you got to start making decisions how you open up the state and giving people opportunity to go back to the economy. Because one thing for sure is going to happen. You're, you're going to have to make sure people can go back to work, the businesses can open, and you're going to have to deal with the virus because it's still going to be here. It's not going anywhere. So we're going to have to do both. And I think we're much more prepared now with the knowledge we have, with the science behind what we have, and how we're going to be able to handle this. But it's going to look different uh, maybe in the Kansas City area versus what it's going to look like in Springfield, Missouri, or rural Missouri, uh, to say. But uh, you have to start the process opening up. And we're going to do that. And we're going to give people the opportunity to go back to work. And we're going to give those business opportunity. We've got to get them back out there. You know, Governor, when we talk about unemployment, there are so many people, thousands of people in Missouri who are having trouble making ends meet. And we just got the latest numbers. Uh, more than 54,000 people filed first-time claims just this week. Now, that is a staggering number. It is going down than when it had been. We were seeing six figures uh, just a couple of weeks ago. We know this is unprecedented volume and that states across the country are having difficulty processing these claims. But now we also know that uh, for the first time, um, Self-employed people, independent contractors, gig employed people can start to apply for pandemic unemployment assistance now, but they have to be denied regular unemployment first. Why is that the way that it's functioning in Missouri? Is that part of just the way the existing technological setup is in the state or is there a plan to change that for them? Yeah, we're, try we're trying to work our way through that. But yeah, it's basically the way the system's set up and, and, and the way it was uh, long before this ever happened. But the reality of it is, is when you're talking about 54,000, it wasn't too long ago. There's several days there, over 100,000. And now we're up to over that 400,000 level. But it's just, it is overwhelming the, the, the system to per se. But I will say this, I talk to governors all the time across the United States. You know, most of their systems went down right after day one, day two, most of the systems went down. Thank goodness our state up and we were able to process these claims. And I think yesterday the director said 90% that was sure handled by uh, on the on the email uh, side of it has been processed. So and we brought like 100 people in to help support that system up. We've reached the private sector to help us make sure we can process even more. But it's challenging. It's, it's still challenging. People are still going to be on the line waiting in certain cases. But we're trying to do a better job of that every day and uh, trying to get the resources we need to do it. But again, it, it's an overwhelming number right now uh, for sure that we're dealing with. What do you say, Governor, to those uh, you know, thousands of people in the state who are still waiting to get those payments? Yeah, we're doing everything we can to get the, those payments out the door. I mean, that's one thing that we made a priority. And, I, and the good thing is they're going to get the payments. You know, if they're qualified, they're going to get those payments. So I think every day that goes by, we're getting a little better on that. And, and I know this is not what they want to hear, uh, but you're going to have to hold on till we can get it through the process and get that money to them. And uh, by all means, if there's other resources we can do or other ways to speed that process up, uh, we're going to do everything we can. Governor, speaking of things that people don't want to hear, it's another wave of this. And that's what we're all afraid of as we go back out there and it starts back up again. We've heard from right. our own health leaders here in Kansas City. Dr. Rex Archer, our director of public health here in town, has talked about that if we do this right, we're going to have more lockdowns. As you reopen the state next week, has that been factored into the possibility of 
four months down the road, six months down the road, that we might have to bring people back indoors for a little while? Yeah, most certainly. I mean, and, but I think it's also realized now that we know what we know, who it targets, where it targets, whether that's nursing homes, whether it's the African American community, whether it's the larger urban areas. You know, we're going to have some idea of really how to, what I want to call spot check or the hot spots, we're going to be able to target those areas where before we were trying to blanket the whole state, not knowing what was going to happen. Now we can really put a lot of resources there, whether that's testing, whether that's mobile testing, uh, whether we want to test companies now that we're doing now across the state, such as we tested one of the companies over the weekend, 3,000 tests that we can do. So we're much more equipped to target those areas instead of just absolutely having to shut the whole state down. But again, if, if that happened four months, five months down the road, uh, we've got a plan in place and we're going to have to deal with it. But uh, for the most part, I, I think we, if we do what we need to do on the social distancing, we all know that's the key to this. And I think Missourians have done a v extremely uh, well job. Uh, of doing that, and I think they're going to continue to do that. I just don't think people are going to just want to run out there and jump into a crowd of people, and I think it's going to be a lot of that's going to be driven by individuals and businesses themselves uh, of how they're going to make sure customers are safe when they go back. So there's a lot of moving parts. We're going to know a lot more in, in a couple of weeks, 30 days, when these orders are over to kind of see what actions we take next. When do you think, Governor, you might make a decision about school in the fall? And we've just heard in the recent days that the CDC might be suggesting guidance of social distancing. A fall school is not going to look like it did last fall, they're thinking. What are you thinking from the Missouri point of view? Yeah, we, we got an advisory group of superintendents across the state we're dealing with all the time with DESE keeping an eye on that. Again, I think it's a little premature to make those decisions at this point. Uh, I'm not sure what the school start date's going to look like. I'm not sure where we're going to be in another 30 days. But I think we're just going to have to be patient to wait and see and make those decisions as we go for the schools. You know, uh, I, I think it's important. We still, we got a start date we got to worry about. But there's still a lot of graduated seniors out there for me. And I've got a granddaughter in that situation uh, that would like to walk down there and get her diploma this year. And for all those that's worked 12 years of their lives that hard, we need to be able to look what possibilities do we have to, to kind of move cautiously forward. But I think there's a lot of things we can get done. But we'll have to address that when we get a little more information, a little more data. Governor, just to um, push on it a little bit more, if we saw a surge again this fall or winter of COVID-19 like we've heard is possible, do you think it is possible to have to shut down schools again? Well, most certainly. I mean, if they've come to that point and we had a huge outbreak of it, we'd have to take a look at all of those things again. But I also, I also want to say that with a caveat, too. You may be able to do it by districts, by portions, by counties to see where that's really happening. And, and, and do you have the resources to confine that? And do we have the, you know, the contact tracing people in place that we'll need? Uh, the one thing I'm optimistic about in, the, in this country and in this state some of the medical uh, institutions that's been involved, the education systems, I truly believe we're going to have a lot more available to treat the COVID-19 by next fall. I, I truly believe that. I just think in the world and the nation as a whole, we're, we're hopefully we're going to have a vaccine. If not, I think we're going to be much more prepared to deal with it uh, this fall than what we were, needless to say, a couple of months ago. Governor Parson, we know you're giving a lot of time to us today. We appreciate that. But one more thing we want to ask you about is, is uh, meat processing plants. President Trump ordered those to stay open just recently. You've talked about this with us before. But how do these plants ensure workplace safety given the number of outbreaks, especially like in South Dakota, not necessarily the ones we saw here in Missouri, but the ones here in Missouri, depending on those other plants, how do you ensure safety for that many people in that environment? Yeah, I think we've been working on this since day one. When we've seen what was happening in some of the other states, I, I think the uh, Christian, the director of agriculture, has been on top of that. You know, been to a lot of these plants, been to talk with all their leadership in those plants. And then what do we have the capability to do? And we had an incident in St. Joe with Triumph up there, and we were able to put our team up there to be able to do testing. Uh, again, about 3,000 tests. We're working through that community up there to isolate that and make sure people understand. Uh, what to do in a quarantine situation. And then I think you could also go to Sling County where there's another little outbreak there. Again, we were able to get on top of that real quick. And, and it's the key to get in there and to test those people and, and to get them separated. And right now we have the ability to do that in these processing plants. But are they a concern? Sure, they're a concern just because of the working environment. We're encouraging those companies every day to make sure that those employees that work there have all the safety precautions that we can put in place and ensure that they need to put it in place to make sure their employees go to work. We have to keep the food chain going in this country. Uh, the one thing we don't want on top of COVID-19 is a breakdown in 
that food chain, and 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 I'm sure that's why the president did what he did. Because I'm sure some of that Governor, cost goes to the, the consumer as well. You don't want, I mean, I'm assuming part of that is making sure people can still afford to buy meat whenever they go out. That's got to be factored in. Yeah, I mean, there's a huge factor in that. I mean, that's why I say when the food chain goes down, it's a domino effect. It all go, it goes to the producers, to the feed stores, to, to the vet side of it, and then to the wholesale side of it, the trucking industry. I mean, there's just so many moving parts to that that affects. And again, just what you said, you know, what you don't want is you don't want this COVID-19 all of a sudden to be used for spiking up, driving up the cost for the everyday consumer. You know, that's why you got to keep these people working to make sure you can retain those costs as much as you can for the everyday person to go out there to buy groceries. Governor Mike Parson joining us with a lot of changes and uncertainty in the future. Thank you, Governor, for addressing a lot of these questions. Thank you. No.